the like just like what happened at Daveville. When you see that on the news, it it reminds you that we're glad to know that there is a God that watches over us. Amen. Oh, amen. Uh, if you got your Bible, go with me to John chapter six. John the sixth chapter. Just give me an amen when you get there. We had a whole presentation to use the screens and everything this morning. Uh, they got a glitch or something, so I'm going to deal with them tomorrow. So we'll have it straightened out. We appreciate your patience. John chapter 6. I'm going to start reading in verse 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I... Hey, get that for me. Is it already on? Oh, God, I didn't know. Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth of the bread shall live forever. Verse 59 said, These things said he in the synagogue, as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew it himself, his disciples murmured at it. He said unto them, Does this offend you? What and if ye shall see what and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profit of nothing. These words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. He said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given to him, given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to come back together at your house this, mor this morning. Thank you, Father, for this day that you have made, Lord, and, uh, and by your grace allowed us to be a part of it. Father, I, as I come before you this morning, Lord, I come and I ask you, Lord God, that you would grant me the anointing that makes the preaching easy and effective. Father, that you would have your way from the first word to the very last. Lord, that you would come down, Lord, and spend time with us this morning, Father. We, Lord, we desperately need a touch of your hand. Father, a move of your spirit. Lord, the, Lord, the, the world in which we live right now, it is a mess. Father, but we're thankful we know, God, that we can still come to you knowing, God, that you are in control. Father, speak to our hearts this morning, Lord. And Father, most of all, I pray, God, that there's one here or one listening, God, either way that, Lord, has never come to know Christ as their personal Savior. Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, that you would deal with them, Lord, that you would convict their hearts, open their eyes. Lord, that to see that they're in need of a Savior, that they're lost, and Lord, that, they, that things may be set in order, God, while there's still time before it's eternally too late. Holy Spirit, have your way in this house this morning. Use me as you see fit and forgive us of our shortcomings and our failures. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it all. In Jesus' name we do pray and let everybody say amen. 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 Jesus tells his disciples, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. 
That would be a hard thing to hear, wouldn't it? But the Bible said he goes on and he tells them that he speaks of things of the Spirit. And what he was telling them was, you go back and you research it through the, through the other Gospels and you will find what he's telling them was to follow Christ, to be a true follower of Christ, just like we talked about in Sunday school this morning, it takes a full 100% commitment. Amen? Amen. Following Christ <coughs> will take you through some good times. It will take you through some bad times. It will take you through many mountaintops, and it will take you through many valleys. Nowhere in the Scripture does it ever tell us that following Christ makes life easier. If anything, it tells us the opposite. That following Christ, Jesus said, if they persecute me, they're going to persecute you. He said, if they hate me, they're going to hate you. And we're told this, and we're given, we're given in full disclosure, but we're told that, that they're given the, the understanding, what he's trying to tell them is, listen guys, following Jesus is not a part of, Time deal. It's not. Salvation is not a part-time gift given from God out of love and grace through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not die a part-time death on Calvary's cross. There comes a time, brothers and sisters, that we have to understand, and I'll put it simply like this, either we're in or we're out. Either when COVID was going on, and I got, to, I got invited to preach to some churches, and I told them the worst mistake that was ever made in the United States of America during COVID was churches closing their doors. That's the same man right there. Preacher, there was a pandemic. Yeah, there was a pandemic. But there is still a God that sits high upon the throne. There is still a God that has us in the palm of his hands. There is still a God that watches over us. There is still a God that still loves loved mankind enough that he sent his only begotten son to die that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah, there is still a God and there is still people in this world that still are in desperate need of his son Jesus Christ. Uh, there are still people in this world, uh, Brother Clyde, every single day uh, that need Jesus. But why, preacher? Because people regularly in this world are stepping off into eternity without him and they're open, just like the rich man and Lazarus, they're opening their eyes in a place called hell. They're opening their eyes tormented in a flame and they're opening their eyes to realize that there is no escape forever more. If the world ever needed somebody to be all in right now that claim Christ, it is right now. When you read the scripture, this is where this is where I bring my title this morning. When you read the scripture that I just read. Does anybody see something that stands out? It's not right. I'm not saying the scripture's in error. In the actions of the scripture, then did anybody in this church this morning notice something that stood out to you? I'll count to three, and then I'll tell you. One, two, three. Here it is. Brother Donald, who was it that was following Christ? Disciples, wasn't it? Disciples, supposed to mean a disciplined follower, a believer in Jesus Christ. That he had many disciples following him, but he turned around and he laid out the line plain as day, and he was letting them know, if you're going to follow me, you have to have a full commitment. How many of you know you can't follow, we are not saved to follow the Lord only when it's good for you and I. 
That's amen right there. But you know what the Bible said? Here's the problem. These people who profess belief, the people who were called disciples that followed him, when Jesus said something that cost them more than they were willing to put in, it made them uncomfortable from the level that they thought they were. The Bible said many of them turned back and left him. Here's the problem. The believers treated Jesus like an option. Can I tell you this morning? Church, Jesus Christ is not an option. He is the only begotten Son of God. He is the Lamb that John said, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He is our sacrifice. He is our, he is our coming King. He is our High Priest. Jesus Christ, the friend that sits closer than a brother, the, the mighty counselor, the, the counselor, the mighty God. He is a shelter. He is a refuge. He is a lot of things. But one thing he is not, he is not an option to those who claim that they are following him. That's one thing in itself. But you know what the sad part is? When you treat Jesus as an option, meaning you're willing to follow him and to be faithful to him as long as it fits within your comfort zone, there's a problem because when there's going to come a time in every child of God's life that following God will take you places that you and your own self are not comfortable with going. There's, mm, I feel that. There's going to be times in following Christ and the command of Christ and sharing the gospel of Christ that you will come in contact with people that you are not comfortable with. There's going to come times. How many of you know God's ways are not our ways? His thoughts are above our thoughts. What does that mean? That means when we, when we surrender our heart and Christ comes in and saves our soul and gives us eternal life, like I told you many times before, at that point, it stops being about me because the Bible even tells me, Know ye not that ye are not your own, for ye have been bought by a price. When Christ come in, then my life has been saved and been called to, to do his will. And my will must be put to the side. Can I tell you honestly this morning? It's a process. It's not a one and done. How many people in here says, preacher, there's still time. I, I, I love the Lord. I follow the Lord. And there's still time. I struggle with my flesh. Anybody? Every one of us do. Paul said, he said, one thing I have found that every time I go to do good, evil is present. A constant war between the flesh and the spirit. And yet, Jesus lets us know, if you're going to follow me and you're going to be one of mine and you really have accepted me as your Savior and Lord, it's no longer about you. Either you're in or you're out. I wish I had time. I'd go into Revelation. Jesus said the same thing. He said, I would that you be hot or cold. For if I find you lukewarm, I'll spew you out. Make me sick to my stomach. They had a problem with commitment. Question one, if you're following Jesus and you get uncomfortable with where it has brought you because it's going to cost you more than you thought it would or it's going to look different than you think it should, whatever the case may be, can anybody tell me where are you going to turn? Where do you turn? To find peace in the midst of a storm. Where do you
do you turn to find help when your health is failing? Where do you turn when you see your children and loved ones going down the wrong road and they're not listening to anything you say? Where do you turn when the devil's riding your back hard? Brother Donald, if Jesus is an option and he's not, the Bible said the disciples turned, many of them turned around and walked off. Where do you go? Have you found anything in this life or this world that is worth walking away from Christ to find your completeness in? No. And yet, the Bible said they walked away, didn't it? Oh, this, they told him, Oh, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Well, preacher, maybe they misunderstood him. No, they didn't because before they said that, Jesus let them know that he was talking about things of the spirit and not the flesh. He was trying to teach them and tell them and after he gave them the understanding and after he gave them the explanation, they still said, this is a hard saying in other words, you're asking too much. I'm not comfortable with this. This is not what I signed up for. You can almost fast forward to 2023. This isn't dignified enough. This isn't this. This isn't modern. This isn't that. And they walked away like they had somewhere else to go that could offer them the same thing that can only be found in Jesus Christ. But you know what's worse than that? Look what it cost them in the long run. Preacher, how do you, well, where are you going with that? The, the scripture doesn't say. When I walk away from Christ and I decide to go my own way and do things my way. Just like you was talking about in Sunday school this morning. You got a first Baptist all the way up to the Baptist number 25. Why? Because people keep splitting. Because somebody says something they don't like. And instead of focusing on Christ. They're fussing about mess. And they decided what? I'm going to go build a church. And I'm going to do it my way. Well I got news for you honey. As long as you're doing it your way. Your way ain't never going to work. You'll never find peace. You'll never find joy. You'll never find the blessings of God. Because when you are a child of God, we must understand the moment that our souls are saved again. It's His way or ain't no way going to work. God's got a blessing for this church. And it's coming. I believe it just like the first time I said it. But guess what? The blessing doesn't come my way. It doesn't come my time or the pews will be slammed full this morning. But I guarantee you one thing. If I surrender myself to his way and to follow his way and be faithful to him, then everything I need that only he can give will be supplied. But look at the cost of walking your own way. Lean into, the Bible even tells you, lean not to your own understanding. Why? You want the Chilton County version? Here it is. Because we don't know nothing. We don't, do we? Sometimes we boast and think we got so much stuff figured out, we don't know nothing. Brother Donald don't even know near as much as he thinks he does. That's amen right there. You say, there you go, Miss Sarah. Go ahead. <laughs> now, he knows a lot more than what I do. But he can't save a soul from hell. He can't be the answer to a prayer in the middle of the night that he can't even hear because he's asleep. He can't give me peace in the middle of my storm. He can't give me assurance when everything is turned upside down. It is in times like that that we realize we really don't know anything 
And without Jesus Christ, Miss Sarah, we're absolutely nothing. Isn't it, isn't it funny, and I'm not lost here, but isn't it funny how sometimes like we get saved and churchified, isn't it funny that we get too big for our own riches? I'm preaching better than y'all amen in this morning. Isn't it funny? Don't know nothing but get a church title and now you can't tell me nothing. Come in lost and on the way to hell, but saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And But you give me a parking spot and now I know how to run the church. We don't know nothing. And these disciples have walked away. Why would you walk away? Because you, why do you treat Jesus as an option? Because you think you know a better way. But let me tell you something. When you turn around and say, I will do it my way, and you walk away from Christ, don't expect the blessings of Christ that you and I so desperately need to follow you as you go your own way. I got peer pressure, preacher. Put your eyes on Jesus. Preacher, some of the people I work with, they're lost, they talk nasty, they're, they, they, they cuss all the time. Oh, is some of it's God awful. My job too. But you know what? In the midst of all that cussing and fussing and dirty joking and all that other stuff, you know what, Brother Donald? They're still watching me to see how far I'm willing to go to be who I said I am in Jesus Christ. They turned away because they thought, they said, you know what, I can't do this. And if I turn away from one thing, I have to have a direction or a plan B as to where I'm going. Can I tell you something this morning? You know what happened to a lot of the churches in the United States? They decided they had a plan B. Then somewhere down the line, old time religion got too undignified, didn't it? Somewhere down the line, people shouldn't wear overalls in church anymore. That's amen. I guarantee you there are churches in the United States, you better not have your liberties on when you walk up in there. Uh-uh. They've got standards. Never mind the only reason they have eternal life is through Jesus Christ. It was not of their own. How many of you remember when the power of God was not hard to find in the local churches? Y'all remember that? Oh, uh, preacher, you talking about Pentecostal? No, honey. Uh-uh. I'm talking about when it didn't matter what denomination you, that you walked in, that you could walk in a body of believers that the power of God was there. And now you walk in, and you know what, Miss Sarah? The truth of the matter is, it's gotten to the point it's hard to find a place where the power of God and the Holy Spirit moves freely in the people, in the building, in the service. It's hard to find. Why? Because somewhere we as a church have decided that we know a better way, a more modern way, and yet can't figure out where's the people going, why is nobody coming, why are we not seeing souls saved, why, what happened to people wanting prayer at the end of service or even during service? You know what you don't find in the church much no more, Brother Clyde? You don't even find testimony where people say, excuse me, preacher, I just got to stand. Who I feel that. I got to stand up and I want to tell somebody what God has done for me. I got to tell somebody how good God has been to me. Let me ask you this morning, church, how many people in here can say with a hundred percent of assurance uh, that without a shadow of a doubt, uh, the week that we just came through, that during that week, uh, that God has been good to you. Amen? Amen. But yet, it's almost like entering into negotiation to get somebody to stand up and testify about it. Why? 
because we've lost the point of being at the point to where we know if there is no other option but Christ, and there's not, then what happened to our willingness to stand on what we know is a fact and declare it that somebody else may hear it? It almost makes you wonder if that was a cause of death on the visitation program. How long has it been? I'm coming back here now, okay? You ain't got to shout an answer. I'm just asking a question. How long, Pleasant Hill, has it been since there's been a true outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God in this house? How long? Ooh, I feel it. How long has it been In this house, since the people of God were in the altars, not crying out for new cars, not crying out for money, not crying out for A, B, C, D, E, or whatever you come up with, but come together in unison as one, saying, God, we need you. How many of you know? Without him? We ain't going nowhere. That's amen. And this ain't me preachers preaching to y'all. Hey, I'm in the same boat with you. I told you. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Without him, I'm nothing. There is no plan B. It's either all got to be God's way, no matter how it looks, or it's not going to be anyway. We can sit here. And wait on Jesus to come, or the undertaker one, whichever shows up first, and go home till one day the door's shut. That's harsh, preacher. No, it ain't. That's truth. And see, the way it applies to any church, it also applies to the individual. Either I give my whole self to Christ, or if I try to serve him in reserve, I wind up standing before him one day with a whole lot of stuff that I should have done and could have done, but I didn't do, and people never come to hear about him. I got news for you. There are times in this life that when we are given a door and an opportunity to share the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ, you and I have to realize something. You don't never know when you and I could be the last time they hear it on this side of eternity. We don't never know how much time they have left. We don't know our time. But one thing we do know, either Christ is everything or we need to get things right with him. They treated him as an option. And they walked away from the only hope in life, Miss Patty, they ever had. The only hope, not just eternal life, but the only hope that through Christ they become a person they don't even know yet. What do you mean, preacher? I mean, at 45 years old, I'm not the same man that I was when I started preaching at 30. I'm not. I had The Lord's had to take me through some things. Brother Raymond, he's had to take me through some mighty, mighty hard things that I did not want to go through. But I look back and realize if, if he had not took me through it and kept me through it, I would not be who I am today. But they lost what could have been over what fitted them at that moment. They lost it. Not only did they lose that, they lost the power. 
in Jesus Christ. We want the power of God in the church. Then get in the way of God's doing it. What do you mean, preacher? I mean line up with him. In him is everything we need now and can be now. And in him and him alone is everything we can be and shall be. Let me tell you something. Outside of Jesus Christ, it ain't happening. How many people here this morning say, Preacher, I know that I know because I have believed that when my life is over or when the trumpet sounds, I'm going home to be with Jesus. Amen? <laughs> well, let me ask you this. If we have faith enough now to believe for then and know, like Paul said, he said, I, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have entrusted unto him against that day. He's talking about eternity. But if I can trust him to take care of his promises then, then why, then why, then why do we ever come to a place of trying to argue and do things different now like we have another option? I got news for you, church. There is but one place that life comes from, and his name is Jesus. There is but one place that, that peace comes from, and his name is Jesus. There is but one place that fulfillment comes from, and his name is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's it. There is no other option. And if we're not willing to surrender to his way and his way alone, but still trying to argue and fight and connive to get our way, we're going nowhere but down. Because you know why? Just like in them scriptures, Brother Donald, when they turned to walk away, did Jesus stop them? Nope. Why? Because the Bible said he already knew who was in the crowd that didn't believe. See, church, it comes down to a heart issue. Do you know if I believe something Hard enough to be fact, I'll defend it. Amen? If I told Brother Donald that mules were no good at pulling wagons, <laughs> how many of you think he'd stand there on that porch and argue with me? <laughs> how many of you think he would tell me, I love you, preacher, but you slap nuts? No, Brother Donald, you didn't hear me. I'm telling you, mules won't pull a wagon. I've been pulling them for years. You're hallucinating. He would stand there. I, I figured him enough. He would stand there to Miss Patty. Probably come had to tell him to hush and come inside because it's bedtime. <laughs> Am I wrong? No. Why? Because what he stands on in his life Good God Almighty. In his life, it is proven, it is true, it has been proven time and time and time again. What you know to be fact, you will stand on and defend, and nobody is going to tell you you're wrong. Ask my wife if I'll do that. My love calls me sometimes the most hard-headed man in the world, don't you? She'll tell me, baby, will you do this, that, or the other? Sure, honey, I'll do it. Oh, here's a good idea. Here, here's a good example. I do laundry. The result comes out, you know what, you ain't gonna believe this. They're just as clean and just as dry as it was when she does it. But ask her how many conversations we've had because my way is different than her way. See, I'll throw them in the machine. 
chunked me a Tide Pod in there. It's the water. It's all good, right? I don't know about all that. That's what I hear. I no, no, no. See, y'all probably do. Y'all talking about it right now. I got soap. I got water. I got dirty clothes. Everything going to be all right. What are you doing? Wash your clothes. No, no, no. Get that Tide Pod out. Baby, we don't need it. And I'm not the sinner, so I'll push too now. Baby, I'm, we, we're going to need soap. Oh, don't play. You know what I'm telling you. The soap goes, but you got to have the water first. Right? That's amen. See, she even said amen. <laughs> you put the water in, then you put the soap in. A hard headed man. What does it matter? It's still going to get wet. Is what she's saying wrong? No. Is what I'm saying wrong? Yeah, poor nerd. <laughs> no. What I'm saying is not wrong. Then why do you argue? Because I believe what I'm doing is right. And she believes what she's doing is right. How many people in here are convinced with everything in you that Jesus is the only thing right? <coughs> Amen? Amen? Can anybody else tell it? That's amen now. Y'all smile at me. I love every one of you. But I got to tell you something. There's coming a time, and that time is now, that every single one of us have to make a decision between us and the Lord. Either I'm all in, which involves putting self to the side. You know what Paul said about it? He said, I, have, I crucify my flesh. How often? Every day. It's a choice by choice. It's not one prayer spent around, sit down, and everything's fine from here to eternity. It is a day by day and step by step choice. But I got so I got news for you. When you understand that every hope, every future, everything that we have is in Christ, here's what I want to ask you. If persecution comes and ridicule comes and all this sudden the other job comes, is there still another option? No. There's not. Last scripture. I got you, Brother <laughs> I'm just going to do one slave catch a catch of mine. Last scripture. And this is where I'll end. Acts chapter 17, verse 28. It says, For in him, who is him? Say it with me. Jesus. God bless you. For in him. We live, we move, and we have our being. As certain of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Any of y'all have bad body aches when you get up to go? She does. You know, my knees, sometimes my, my left knee is like being in a car on a flat tire. The rest of them is going. It's back here going. Doom, 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 doom. Yeah. It don't want to get up and go. But thanks be unto God. I'm still going. I believe that every time breath goes in my body and comes back out, it's only by the goodness of God. Amen? Mm -hmm. I believe every time that my heart goes doom, 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 while I'm sound asleep, it's only for the goodness of God. I know for a fact the only reason I stand here today at 45 years old is because of God. Because you know why? The doctors told Mama I'd never live to come out of the hospital when I was born. You know why I have eternal life, Clyde? Because there is a God that loved me in spite of me and he knew. Thank you, Lord.
he knew there was no other option to save my wretched soul. Jesus had that moment, didn't he, Miss Patty? In the garden, he said, Lord, Father, if there be another way, what do you say? What do you say? Lord, if there's another option, let this cup pass from me. How many times did he ask it, Brother Donald? Three times, didn't he? Three times! But every time he said, But Lord, not my will, but thine be done. Why did he do that, Raymond? Because he knew there was no other option that could pay the sin debt for my soul and your soul and every one of our souls. Commitment brings glory to God. You know what this world really needs right now? You want to know the truth about it? In the midst of all the chaos? It needs a body of believers that have been washed in the blood that have one understanding. There is no other option but Jesus no matter what it cost me. And I guarantee you that ain't popular nowadays either. Because we live in a society where it's all about self-love and self-care. There's a, there's a degree of that. I get to take care of yourself, all that other good stuff. But there comes a time to where either I'm all in <coughs> or I'm all out. There comes a time that either I believe that Jesus Christ is more than enough or I don't. There comes a time that it's going to show out of my own life. Either I follow him as long as I'm comfortable or I follow him because I know in him I live, I breathe, I move, I have my being. That means he's everything to me. There comes a time. It's going to show either we're in or we're out. What do you mean in or out? You're talking about losing salvation? No. I'm talking about there, there comes a time that's going to show either we're serious about being in the will of God or willing to walk away and risk it outside of the will of God. And the question is this morning, is he everything to you? Or is Jesus just an option when you find yourself in trouble? I've never seen one person in trouble. They could be the worst sinner on this side of the Mississippi. It would not matter. But you, I, I, heard, I heard a military person tell me one time, You'll never find an atheist in a foxhole. You could take the most worst. Miss Helen, I ain't talked to you this morning. I'm sorry. You could take the most worst ungodly sinner, but you let things get bad enough. I guarantee you one thing. He learns how to pray, don't he? Or she does, or whatever the case may be. He can make fun. He or she can make fun of church and blast people their whole life. But you let trouble come bad enough, and all of a sudden they believe in the Christ that they wanted nothing to do with. <coughs> Why would you say that, preacher? Because the same thing applies in the church house. There, my Lord, there are children of God that have been washed in the blood, and the only time you talk to Jesus is when you're in trouble. And wonder... Miss Patty, where's the power of God gone? I asked my daddy one time, he was still alive. Daddy, I remember coming up in the Baptist church where the Spirit of God would take over. Baptists used to have shout to Pentecostals. You lying? No, I ain't. I've been in services where people, now get, now hold on to your seat now. I've been in services where people had demons cast out of them right in front of God and everybody. Preacher, we don't want that here. 
Did Jesus not come to set the captive free? That's what he did for Mary Magdalene, wasn't it? That's what he did for the demoniac, of Gar Gar I think it was Gardera or Gardenia, whatever you want to say it. I'm saying the power of God everybody ain't comfortable with. But I'm going to tell you what, if you're one of his children, the problem's not him. The problem has become here. Daddy said, you want to know where the fire went, son? I said, yes, sir, Daddy, I do. Because you don't see church now and the power of God and, and, and come into a service and where the power of God is so strong, a sinner either has to make a decision to get right or not have seen them get up and get out. They couldn't sit comfortably anymore. Why, Daddy? Where has the power gone? He says, son, I always remember one thing. Nowhere in the Bible does God ever change and God does not move. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today and he'll still be the same forevermore. And you have to understand, son, if God ain't moved and God ain't changed, it's because the people that claim him have quit seeking him and his presence and his power with all of their heart. Where are we at, Pleasant Hill? I said, we, I didn't say you. Where do we stand this morning? Well, preacher, we want to move with the Lord. But do we want it bad enough to say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Grow the church, Lord. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if I like it or not. Because I told you before, God's will will never contradict God's word. There used to be an old song, and I'm hushing right now. Sorry, Scooter, I, I lied to you, didn't I? I rolled the sleeves up too early. I remember an old song that goes like this. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. And I can't remember all the words, but I know that you got to get the point across. You can say that if you know it. Forgive me, I ain't got a book in front of me. The point is, that's where we have left as a nation. Somewhere down the line, it's become more about us and our thoughts than realizing and remembering everything we have in Him. He asked His disciples, Who do, will you walk away too? You gonna be like everybody else? Peter said, "No. Where are we gonna go, Lord? The words of life are in you, Lord. My only hope is in you. Where am I gonna go? What does that mean? It means, Lord, I realize that there is no other option but you. It is Christ and Christ alone. And you know what?" Even that, and Miss Mary, play something softer. Or no, 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 no. We'll sing something. Don't worry about it. But understanding that understands like everybody else. God gives us a decision with what's been presented to us. I just want to tell you something, Miss Candy. When I see things on the TV and on the news and I hear the stuff going on in the world, I won't lie to you. I've had days that I had to do some deep soul searching. I did. When I hear about the government putting spies in the church, anybody with sense, you got to do some soul searching. But you know where I've come to, Brother Clyde? Really 
no matter what comes, I will not, oh, hallelujah, I will not forsake the one that's never forsook me. What if, God, I feel it. What if it cost you your life? Hey, I got news for you. My salvation costed him his. He got up, preacher. Woo! We read the word. Oh, hallelujah. He got up. But he said, I would too, didn't he? There ain't nothing in this world worth selling Jesus over. There ain't nobody in this world that will be a plan B for the only begotten Son of God, a risen Savior, a coming King. If there's ever been a time to commit, it is now. And this morning I would ask you, I'm just going to count to five. We, we, we'll sing another Sunday, okay? I'm just going to count to five. Why, preacher? Because we all grown. Youngest one here is, nope, I'm sorry. Youngest one here is back there. But after her is 22. We all know right and wrong. We all make decisions. Nobody has to beg or shouldn't have to. This is what I'll ask you. And I don't know what time it is. really don't care because I'm not in a hurry. But this is what I'll ask you. If you're here this morning, you might say, Preacher, I know I'm born again. I remember where I was when Jesus saved me. But Preacher, i got to be honest with you. I'm not where I need to be. I need to make a deeper commitment to Christ. I don't want you to raise your hand. I want you to find an altar. That's it. Preacher, maybe you're here and you say, I don't, you know, I, I, I think I'm saved. I, I know I've been in church my whole life. I'm this, I'm that. You know, mom and daddy taught me about God. I believe in him. But preacher, I don't remember the place exactly where I was when Jesus changed me. If that's you, don't leave here the same way you came in. Jesus is here. I don't need you to raise your hand. Find an altar. Why I got to go to the altar? Well, I've heard that in years. Why I got to go to the altar, preacher? Because if he calls, you better. And that applies to the man preaching too, amen? I'll count to five. Nobody moves. We'll go home and we'll go to this list and we'll come back tonight. Amen. One, two, three, four. Keep praying. Father, Lord, I know that in this world in which we live, Lord, it seems like there's more and more and more and more opposition every day. Lord, it seems like there's more people at times that hate us without a cause or without reason. But Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for Kayla. Lord, I ask you that you would strengthen her. Father, that you would give her boldness and grace like never before. Lord, she came this morning. Lord, she came and she made a decision. Father, I, I know she's yours. I was there, and I thank you for that. But dear Lord, I pray, God, that you grant her the assurance, the strength, the power. Lord, to put her eyes upon you no matter what may come because, Lord, we have no hope except you. Father, I pray that you administer to her heart. Lord, meet the needs. Lord, and answer the questions that only you and her know about. And, Father, we thank you. 
that we praise you. Lord, I pray that you would just use her at Montevallo. Lord, in a place that's full of people that want nothing to hear or nothing to do with you and what is right, I pray, Lord, that you would shine like a diamond through her, that people see Jesus in her, and Father, strengthen her, and God, grant her the resolve, Lord, and the reminder of knowing, Lord, that there's never a time she's alone. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we give you the glory and honor for it all. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Two, three, four, and five. I thought I turned this thing off. It's still on. No, there it is. I'm sorry. I could have sworn I turned it off. <coughs> God bless each and every one of you. I pray for the Clyde is or peculiar times we're in. It is. It's uncertain times that we're in. Sometimes, Brother Donald, it's even scary times that we're in. But we have the assurance that as a child of God, we're not in them alone. Stand up for Jesus. No matter what, you be the light. And it, this is a you too to me. You be the best light you can be. Because our job hasn't changed. And we have the understanding that there ain't no option outside of Jesus. Whether shall I go? My only hope, Brother Donald's in him. I love the church members with all my heart. But how many of you know if my hope's in you, I'm in a mess? And before you think I'm being ugly, if all your hope's in me, you're in a mess too. <laughs> Why? Because we all run to Jesus and lean on him. Tonight, training you to start at 5 o'clock. Service start at 6. Come back and be with us. Pray one for another. Hug somebody's neck. And if nothing else to be said, huh? Okay, go ahead, stop it. If nothing else to be said, I thought she just jumped up. So I was like, what in the world? Brother Clyde, dismiss us, please. Thank you, Father, for all your many blessings. Thank you for letting us join in your house. And please go with us for the next, next, uh,